Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about how you can create and read cookies with the help of Google Tag Manager. As always these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com and if you want to find out more about Google Tag Manager we actually have a resource guide for you that you can download and it's freshly renewed so there are a lot of different sources to dive deeper into Google Tag Manager. We'll let you know about the best resources, the people who to follow and tools that you can use to make your life with Google Tag Manager a little bit easier. So if you want to download that for free, head over to gtmtraining.com slash guide. So if you have been working with Google Tag Manager for a while, you might be familiar with the problem that if you click on a link on your web page and go to the next page, Google Tag Manager is completely reset and reloads and all the tags, variables and the connected triggers are re-evaluated and there's just no way to retain information from one page view to another with Google Tag Manager. And this is actually a built-in feature of JavaScript and this is pretty normal because we have the capabilities on websites to utilize cookies. And Cookies are these little text files that you can inspect when you go to your developer tools. Under the resource section, we have here our cookies and the cookies that were set on our domain name that we are on right now are first party cookies. And then we can see which cookies are set on this browser on this website at the moment in time. We can see that a cookie has a name, a value, and also an expiration date. So for example, Google Analytics sets cookies, but if you have retargeting deployed, you would also see cookies from the retargeting vendor and many other different cookies that are important. For example, on this website, we have a shopping cart running and we want to retain the information when we put something into the cart that the number up here for the shopping cart stays the same no matter what page I'm on. And this all is made possible by cookies. And today I want to show you how you can create a cookie, set a cookie with the right value and retain the information throughout the session and then read the cookie later when you want to use it, for example, in firing a tag. So the scenario here is a contact form and on this contact form, I have a Google Analytics tag firing once you submit this form. You can see it here. And with this information of this event, I want to actually send over also the landing page, the page that the user landed on when he came to our page with this contact form submit, because it might give me some indication of what he is interested in and that might be valuable information when following up. So how would I gather that information of the landing page? Now I talked a little bit about landing page triggers in a video that I've made a while ago. And the landing page is basically the first page within our session. And if we say that our intended fourth page is our contact page, how can we retain the information that the user was landing on this page throughout session and then porting it over to our event tag. Well, this is what we are gonna use cookies for. Before we get started, there's a great resource about cookies under quicksmart.org, where I tell you everything you need to know about cookies and also give us an example code on how we can create a cookie. And this is actually this code bit here, which I'll just copy and use for our example. We'll go ahead and go over to Google Tag Manager and create a new tag. And I'll call this tag set cookie. And it's a custom HTML tag, which will fire upon our entering of the site on the landing page. We'll go with our custom HTML tag. And before we paste our code in here, 
we actually need to surround it by script tags because this is HTML that we need to be inputting here. So now I can go ahead and paste this in. And this function named create cookie will create my cookie if I pass in a name, a value, and a date that it should be valid for. So we can call this function by inputting our function name, which is create cookie, and then pass in parameters, which is the name of the cookie, which I will call landing page. And then the value of the cookie, which I will keep dynamic, and we'll talk about this in a second. And then how long I want this to be valid for. And I want to keep this a session cookie. So if the user leaves the page, the cookie will also be deleted. So I'll not input anything here. And that's the function that creates our cookie. Now, what we left empty here is our value of our cookie. And, and we actually want to set it to the page path that the user is on at that moment in time. We can go with the built-in variable called page path. Sets our cookie with the page path and the expiration of none, which will expire our cookie when the browser closes. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go and continue and choose a firing trigger. Now I have already prepared a trigger called landing page trigger, which you can rebuild by watching the video about the landing page trigger, which will fire our tag basically when the referrer is not demoshop.com, which is our domain. Therefore, we came from an outside source to the page. Let's refresh this. And we get a validation error. What could that be? Let me see. Ah, this comma was actually too much. That should do it. Let's save the tag. Refresh the page. All right, and go back to our page. Let's go here, first of all, to our home page. Now, the tag will not fire if we come from another page. So we actually need to simulate that we come from an outside source. So let's go over to Google. And put in demoshop.com. And here is the domain and it redirects, we come from Google. So our landing page trigger evaluates to true, our set cookie is executed, and now we should have a cookie set. Let's check this by going to our developer tools, under the cookie section, we have here the demo shop, and there is a new landing page cookie with the value of the page that we are landed on, which is our home page. So it's just slash. All right, now the user could be clicking around on all these different pages. So he goes to a card or goes to a product page and goes back and forth. But eventually he lands on the contact page. Now, upon the form submission, we will fire a tag into Google Analytics and we want to include the information that we have from our landing page cookie. So how do we do this? Let's head over to Google Tag Manager and build a variable. And this variable will be our landing page cookie. And it's of the type the first party cookie. And all we need to do is put in our cookie name. That should do it. Let's create this variable and refresh our preview in debug mode. Go back to our page, refresh this as well, and see what our cookie gets filled with. Let's go to one of these events, 
click on variables and then see what our landing page cookie gets filled with. Unfortunately, it's undefined. That is odd. Um, let me first check whether we have our cookie set, if it's still available. Yes, it's still here. I may got the cookie name wrong in our variable. So let's check that really quickly. Yes, there was a big P in here. So let's save this variable, refresh our preview and debug mode, refresh our page. And hopefully now we can check the variables and see that our landing page variable was now set to the slash, which represents our home page. Now we can use that information in the event tag that we send out to Google Analytics upon this form submit. All we have to do is go into our Google Tag Manager and look up that tag that fires the event. And we inc can include the information in one of the fields, the category, action, or the label. Since the label is still free, I'll just type in here landing page. And afterwards, it should be filled dynamically with whatever we have here with the landing page cookie. Put a space in here. All right, that's it. Let's save this tag. Refresh our preview and debug mode, refresh our site. Input our name, our email address, just for testing sake. And I click on send with the command key pressed. Our Google Analytics event tag fires. And we have a Google Analytics event that transfers the information of the contact form submit, but also our label landing page colon and the slash. Now just to try this out again, let's say we come in directly to this page. Um, first of all, let's get rid of our cookies by going into our developer tools and just deleting our cookies here. Can do this with this button, I'll clear the cookies. And now let's simulate coming from outside. I have here a link called demo store, which takes us to another store. And we have down here a back to the demo shop link. Which unfortunately takes us back to the home page again. Let's try something else. I'm going to just manipulate this link really quickly to take us to our landing page. All right. And now when I click this link, it should take me to the landing page. And also our set cookie should be firing. We can see the cookie value obviously in our variable which is the landing page cookie, which was now set to landing page. And when we go to the contact form, fill it out again. And click send. We should see a new event. Yeah, that fired into Google Analytics, which is filled with the label landing page equals slash landing page. That's the page that we landed on when we first came to the page. So this is a really easy method to persist data throughout the session or even longer throughout the user journey with the help of cookies in the browser. Now the, obviously, the obvious downside is if the user changes the browser during his user journey or clears the cookies, then the information will be lost. But there are many different use cases for setting 
up a cookie with Google Tag Manager. If you wanna see other use cases, head over to our YouTube channel where we just published two use cases. One is the filtering internal traffic, but also the spam removal video where we'll make use of this cookie. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel or give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to Google Tag Manager, check out our free email course at gtmtraining.com slash email course. I'm Julian, till next time.